Today, I will be using a full team of Pokemon based on characters from Terraria. Special thanks to Supremacy Smoke for the team idea. If you have an idea for a Pokemon team, be sure to comment below and I will use it. And if you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. And now, without further ado, let's get right into the battles. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, lovely people. Today I am using a Terraria team. I know absolutely nothing about Terraria or anything like, like it. I just know that I think it's 2D Minecraft. Is that going to upset some people? Uh, anyway, I have two really interesting battles to showcase and I hope you enjoy them. So with this team, I also decided to use the, uh, the Terraria bosses just because there's a lot of like human characters. I think Santa Claus is in this game. What is he doing here? Um, so I'm going to lead things off with my Vespaquin. This is a lead Vespaquin. It's pretty interesting. I have Toxic Spikes and Spikes on this and I have Pounce and Destiny Bond. So... I'm running max speed, so if I could get off a pounce and drop the opponent's speed, I could potentially get a uh, a Destiny Bond KO. I have Focus Ash on that, even though Vespa Gwen has like really good bulk. It, it's come in handy a couple of times, mainly because I'm actually using an Ubers team, so I'm fighting opponents that also have like Uber Pokemon. So the Tinglu is gonna uh, U-turn out into a Tinglu. Oh my goodness! So I'm like, yeah, that that earlier was using Burning Jelly Sea, so I was like, yeah, that's definitely like a Zoroark in the back. So. I'm running this really interesting weird deer set. I have a blunder policy with calm mind, a hypnosis, and I have store power and earth power. I was kind of hoping to get a sleep off versus this Ting Lu, but unfortunately, uh, my blunder policy set really isn't going to be doing too much versus this because Ting Lu is such a, a specially defensive Pokemon, especially with its ability. So it really, it really wasn't going to be doing too much, especially since this Pokemon could have like whirlwind. So into my Orthworm here. I'm running a, a Shed Tail Orthworm. I'm going full out with the heinous strategies this time. So I'm running Body Press on this. I'm just going to chip down the Tinglu as much as I possibly can. I have Earth Eater on this. And while I was doing battles with this team, I noticed that not many people really knew about uh, Orthworm's ability, which gives it an immunity to ground moves and also heals it. So I was like, okay, that's really helpful. I could actually be able to you know, damage this Tinglu, but they're going to swap it to Pesherunt. So I'm like, okay, well, this this turn I should be able to tank whatever uh, hit this uh, goes for me, and I should be able to get off a Shed Tail, and they're going to go for the Parting Shot. So I'm like, okay, that's good. I'm going to be able to get a free Shed Tail off versus whatever they bring in, and I'm going to be able to swap in and pass a Substitute onto whatever uh, Pokemon has an advantageous situation. So... In comes Archaladon. I, this Pokemon has been like my biggest arch uh, nemesis, pun intended, because I, like this Pokemon is so hard to deal with. It's such a tanky Pokemon, and with stamina, it can constantly get defense boost, and it just gets really, really bulky and hard to deal with. So I'm going to swap in my Giratina here, origin form for uh, Moon Lord. Now, there isn't any Cthulhu Pokemon, so... You know, I thought Giratina Origin was like a really good fit considering it's also like a like a Demogorgon and it's like it has a similar color scheme. Now that being said, this Giratina Origin of course is why I'm running Ubers, but it's not the best Pokemon on my team and you'll see that later. So I'm going to go for the Earth Power versus this Archaladon. They're going to break my substitute, but I'm going to be able to get off the KO here with the Shadow Ball. I'm running a specially offensive Giratina Origin. So there goes Archaladon. Like I said, that Pokemon is super annoying to deal with like i feel like some of my teams can't deal with it and sometimes they can it's really it really depends so the zoroark is gonna come in they probably expected me to swap and so they went for the nasty plot like like you know they probably thought that i would swap versus a shadow ball but i knew that i could be able to tank a shadow ball from the hisuian zoroark so i'm just gonna absolutely nuke it with draco meteor this is a shadow ball draco meteor earth power and pain split with uh terra steel with levitate now here comes the Miraidon. Now, this Pokemon was a big problem in this game, as Miraidon usually is, because Miraidon is such an absolutely offensive monster. Now, I'm going to sacrifice my Orthworm. There was a lot of spikes set up, so I knew that I wasn't going to be able to pass any Shed Tails off with this team. So, there goes my uh, Orthworm to the Draco Meteor. I, I even get KO'd even do the resist. So, they're actually going to have a White Herb on their on their Miraidon, so they're not going to be affected by the special attack drops. Now, into King Slime, my shiny Ditto. This is actually the second video in a row that I'm using this Ditto, and it's the exact same Ditto too. It's Choice Scarf and Terra Ghost. Now, I thought, okay, well, this is either going to draw out a Terra, which it does, or it's going to cause them to swap, but 
I could easily go for the Choice Scarf Draco Meteor and do a bunch of damage to this Pokemon. So they're going to Terrestrialize into an Electric type. So I'm like, okay, well, this is going to do a lot of damage. But unfortunately, it just barely misses the KO versus the Meteidon. And they're obviously going to go for their old Draco Meteor and absolutely obliterate my Ditto. So I'm like, man, this Meteidon is really hard for me to deal with. I have my Giratina is weak to Dragon moves. And my Weird Deer really isn't going to be taking much and doing much at all. So I thought, well... I might be able to set up my last Pokemon in the back, and it's going to be really crazy. So, swapping in my Weird Deer, I'm going to bait out the Draco Meteor from this Meat Idon, hopefully, so that it could get more special attack drops, which it goes for. So, I'm like, okay, that's good. I actually take that. What the heck? And uh, the Meat Idon is going to get minus four in special attack now, and they're going to finish me off with the Dazzling Gleam. So, I was like, okay, this is perfect. This is ideal. I have my last Pokemon to swap in the back, which is my Basculegion. Now, if you've never seen Basculation in action before, this Pokemon is absolutely ridiculous. So, I'm going to Terrasilize into a Fighting. I'm running Terra Fighting Basculation on this, and I have Agility to boost my speed. So, I was thinking, okay, well, the Miraidon is going to go for that Terra Electric Electro Drift in the Electric Terrain, but since they're minus 4, and since, I'm, since I Terrasilize, I should be able to tank it, which I do really well, actually. So... Going for the agility, that is going to assure that I'm going to outspeed every single Pokemon that they have in the back. So, I'm like, okay, this is great. I'm perfectly set up now. I should be able to snag a win, potentially. So, in terms of Petra Run, oh my god, this poor, this poor Peach is going to get absolutely obliterated by last respects. This move is one of the most hilariously overpowered moves in the game. It, I essentially... It starts at 50 base power and then it increases by 50 base power for every Pokemon that's fainted. So at the moment, I have a 250 base power ghost move with adaptability. Now, I don't have the adaptability boost, but it's still going to absolutely destroy the Alola Ninetales even after the snow defense boost. Oh my goodness. So in comes Tigloo. Tigloo is on a low amount of health. And like, I do have Terra Blast fighting on this as well. And I also have Wave Crash. So this Pokemon just does absolutely monstrous damage, and I'm gonna take it out with the Terra Blast Fighting versus the Ting Lu. I could have taken it out with Last Respect, but I just thought, you know, I I should just click the super effective move. And the last Pokemon is Miraidon, which I outspeed thanks to the agility, and that's pretty much gonna be the end of the first game. They're gonna uh, cancel the battle here, and like, yeah, this Basket Legion is such a monstrous Pokemon. It's definitely the best Pokemon on my team, and you know, the main primary reason that I'm mainly sticking with like legendary uber battles with this team which is really 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 hard to find on wi-fi can i just say like i got a lot of battles with this team and a lot of the times my opponents would end up uh canceling the battle and everything so i tried my best try trying to find the two best battles that i could with this team now into this lead cleavor which is gonna go for the stone axe and set up the stealth rock now i'm actually gonna set up toxic spikes in this game i didn't do it previously because they had the pet run that could easily absorb uh toxic spikes meanwhile in this game they didn't really have any form of hazard removal or like a poison type so i'm like okay these toxic spikes are free they take me out with the fate i'm like why is this cleaver fate what the heck so into my earthworm i was thinking i sh i should be able to badly take a close combat from this thing and uh potentially like break its focus sash because i imagine that this thing is running a focus sash right it's, if it's like a lead pokemon so they're actually running reversal on this set so i'm like oh that's interesting so that pretty much confirmed to me that it was focus sash because you know reversal functions where the lower amount of health that you have the more damage it does so reversal would work really well if this pokemon is brought down to one health thanks to its focus sash so i thought well i'm just gonna get off the shed tail i'm actually I want to go into my ditto here because if I go for ditto and I go for I'm going to copy the opposing cleavor and I should be able to go for stone axes and get up my own stealth rock potentially. So that would be really nice to have, you know, the more entry hazards, the better. Right. So transforming into the opposing cleavor with sharpness. And unfortunately, my stone axe misses. I'm like, no, I could have had a free substitute off. And of course, they land their stone axe. So I'm like, dang, well. I, this is fine. I'm, I, I hope I, I just hope that I land my next stone axe, right? Uh, so they're gonna break my substitute there and I'm gonna go for the stone axe and thankfully I land and that's gonna be enough to take out the cleavor. So I'm like, okay, this is really good. I have a layer of I have a layer of toxic spikes and now I have stealth rocks on the team. I never really run stealth rocks, so this is kind of rare for me. So into the cure of moi. Oh my goodness. Now I was a bit suspicious of this Pokemon. I was like, well, I 
I, why did they bring it in? You know, like I, I, I know that Kyurem naturally outspeeds Cleavor, but I'm running Choice Scarf, so they probably know that. So I'm anticipating that this Kyurem White is also Choice Scarf. So I'm just going to test and see. I'm going to sacrifice my Orthworm here just because it's on a low amount of health and I can't really do much to it. I have a Terra Normal on this, by the way, so I, I could like, I could beat Fluttermate and take it out with an Iron Head. I also have Metal Burst on that set too. And uh, the Curum is just going to take me out with the Blue Flare. So I'm like, okay, well, they're going to take the Poison Damage. And I'm going to bring back out my Ditto. If they lock themselves into the Blue Flare, I imagine that I should be able to tank it. And I'm going to go for the Dragon move and hopefully take out the Curum. So transforming into that uh, Curum, I'm going to have Turbo Blaze as well. And they're actually going to outspeed me. So I'm like, okay, yeah, this Curum was definitely Choice Scarf. I definitely made the right call swapping out into my Earthworm there. So... Going for the Dragon Pulse, and that's going to be enough to take out the Curum White. This Pokemon has like like 170 special attack or something. It's it's insane. So they're gonna bring in Porygon 2. Now Porygon 2 is an incredibly bulky Pokemon, especially with a Violite. So I'm like, okay, well at least it's poisoned. But I'm probably not gonna stay into this matchup just because, you know, Porygon 2 might be able to take a Dragon Pulse from Curum White, especially since it's only Dragon Pulse and not really like Draco Meteor. So, they're actually going to trace my Turbo Blaze too. So, I'm actually going to swap out there and I'm going to swap into my Weird Deer. And I'm like, well, I should be able to tank hits with this Pokemon and like potentially go for some stored powers and like calm minds and maybe tank these tri attacks from the, the, the Porygon too. So, I do tank it, uh, but it does less than half. So I'm like, okay, well, if I set up Calm Minds, I should be able to outspeed because Porygon 2 isn't exactly, like, fast. And I should be able to, um, I should be able to hopefully 1v1 this Pokemon, or at the very least do a lot of damage to it. So if they're going to paralyze me, what the heck, and they're going to go for that yellow color, and that's going to potentially, like, stop my Calm Mind shenanigans. But I was like, okay, well, that's fine. I should be able to uh, continuously, like, tank these uh, tri-attacks at the very least. And I do tank it. I'm like, okay, that's good. I'm going to go for one more Calm Mind here. And hopefully, Stored Power would do a lot of damage. I don't think it will take it out. But I assume that it's going to do, like, a really good amount of damage for me to Revenge KO with one of my other Pokemon in the back. Mainly my Basky Legion, potentially. So, they're going to get hit by Poison. And then they have Foul Play. I'm like, oh my goodness. I, I actually get taken out by the Foul Play. I actually am running uh, Defense Investment on that, too. So... Dang, I can't believe that foul play took me out. I was like, no, that sucks. I, I couldn't get off the, the weird deer. It's, it's a weird Pokemon. So, into my Basque Legion, I was hoping that I could be able to take it out with the adaptability boosted uh, Wave Crash, but it barely lives. I'm like, oh my god, no. Don't go for don't go for Thunder Wave, please. But they go for foul play. I'm like, okay, that's actually really good. And I actually take that. Oh my goodness. Now, I was like, oh my goodness. That's good that I tanked it. And that's also good that they didn't go for Thunder Wave. Otherwise... This Pokemon has a really good matchup versus the rest of their Pokemon. So into their Golden Go. Now I was thinking, okay, is this Scarf Golden Go or is it just going to outspeed me? I actually outspeed the Golden Go. Oh my goodness. And I'm going to absolutely obliterate it with the adaptability boosted last respect. That does so much damage. Thank goodness. Now into the Dragapult. This Pokemon is easily going to outspeed me. And I knew that I had absolutely zero switch ins to this Pokemon. So I'm just going to let myself get taken out here by the Dragon Darts. Now, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go into my Choice Scarf Ditto here and see exactly what this Dragapult is working with. And potentially, like, get a really good KO and, like, hopefully be able to win this game. Because their the last Pokemon is also weak to Ghost. So swapping into my Ditto, I'm actually going to take uh, Stealth Rocks and I'm going to barely live that. So... This Dragapult was pretty interesting. It had a it had Sucker Punch, which I was really worried about, but it also had a Terra Blast. So I'm like, okay, well, I could get off the Terra Blast Ghost at the very least. They had they had U-turn and Dragon Dart. So I'm like, if this goes for Sucker Punch, which it doesn't, I was like, okay, that's really good. They they're they're probably Choice Bandit in that case, and I'm gonna be able to get off that Terra Blast Ghost and outspeed it thanks to the Choice Scarf. And there goes the Dragon Ball. So I'm like, okay, this is really nice. I actually made really good use of the 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 Terra Ghost on this. So the last Pokemon is Necrozma. I love this Pokemon. It has such a such a good design, all of its forms. But I think this form of Necrozma is definitely my favorite. Now they're gonna Terrasalize in Necrozma. I actually have no idea what the Cosma would possibly be, but they're running Terra Fairy on there. So I'm like, okay, well, we should be able to take the, the Terra Blast Ghost, but it is still going to do a lot of damage just because Dragon Ball has a lot of good attack. It just doesn't have a really good physical ghost move, except that I have a physical ghost move right now. Ooh. So they're going to take the Terra Blast Ghost, and they're actually running a, they're running a Key Berry. I have no idea what this set could possibly be, uh, but they're going to take me out with the Photon Geyser easily. I'm on such a low amount of health, but I thought, okay, well, 
I have a max speed Giratina in the back that I should be able to absolutely dismantle this um, this Necrozma with, and I sh that should be game, right? Because they're on a low amount of health, I should be able to pick it off easily with the Shadow Ball, even if they're max pedef. I, I imagine that I should be able to easily take it out. So going for, I'm going to take that Stealth Rock damage and I'm going to go for the Shadow Ball. And that is going to be the end of this game and both games. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but I'm very close to 700 subscribers. So please feel free to subscribe if you enjoy the Steam Team content and enjoy these videos in general. My name is Skyla. Don't forget to smile and I will see you all next time.